I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and it's time to get wealthy. You're going to learn exactly what you need to do to turn your income into wealth and achieve the level of financial success that you desire and you deserve. You know, if you were to look at the strides that Black women are making, they are achieving great strides in every area, whether it's school and educational attainment, whether it's home ownership, participating in their 401ks, the fastest growing segment of incomes for black women is $150,000 and above. So the question I have is why is the wealth gap so big? If you were to actually look at wealth, what you would see is that the median wealth for black women is $200. Well, that's what we are here to correct. And that's what you're going to learn on Get Wealthy. So I'm really, really excited to be sharing with you exactly what you need to do. And so I want to start by just talking about what are the things that you don't know and they don't want you to know. The first is you may have a belief that more education means more income. You might also think that more income will lead to financial success. And you may have really bought in to the dream of that 401k and financial independence. Well, what I want, want to share with you is that so many people like you have bought into this dream just like our guests today. Dr. Sharon Dean was told that the more education she earned, the more money she would make. And she has the degrees behind her to show for it. Not only does she have a medical degree, but she also has two graduate degrees. And instead of ending up with higher income, what she ended up with is a lot of student loan debt. And that's why I'm so excited to have her on the show with me today so that she can share how that American dream, she had to shift a number of things. So welcome to Get Wealthy. Thank you, Deborah, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So before we get started, I've given a little background. Just tell people about yourself. I'm a native New Yorker. I uh, grew up in the inner city in New York, a single parent household with two siblings. So I saw a lot of struggle in my life financially. And it was something that I worked, uh, you know, I continue to work to avoid. Uh, and so, like you said, I made all the mistakes. So I did all the things that they tell us is the American dream. I went to school, I got advanced degrees. Um, and I work daily, uh, you know, to, to make sure that I leave something behind for my children, some kind of legacy and breadcrumbs to build their own legacy. Oh, I love that, Sharon. I love that you said breadcrumbs, because what I really want our audience to understand is to learn a little bit more about, yes, you did have, uh, you know, you bought into that dream, ended up with, this, with a lot of student loan debt, and you also were, had a negative $1,500 in net worth, and now all of that changed. And so mm -hmm. what I really want to get into is a conversation about exactly how you were able to really shift from where you were uh, in, in terms of taking on all this educational debt in, in order to uh, earn more money to making the shift to increasing your net worth to multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars in just a year. And so we're going to go into that when we come right back. So don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to talk about mindset strategy and execution, the framework that Dr. Sharon Deans did to really change her financial situation and turn that uh, situation around. <music> Let's be honest, as successful women, we're crushing it. Maxed out 401k and Roth IRA? Check. Aggressive savings and investments? Check. Yet, the freedom our success was supposed to buy can leave us stuck on the six-figure hamster wheel, watching retirement slip further down the road. 
there's another way. Get coaching courses and community at WealthyU.com. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Welcome back to Get Wealthy. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and I'm really excited because today we're talking with Dr. Sharon Deans about her uh, her, her financial road to, to wealth, and it wasn't that easy, but it all began with mindset. And so, uh, Dr. Dean, thanks for coming on with me today. I'm really kind of sharing your story. Now, I alluded to the fact a little earlier that when we met, you had a net worth of how much? Let's talk about that just a little bit. So it's negative $1,500. Um, in 2020, I, I've been making vision boards for several years. And in 2020, I had on the vision my vision board that that was going to be my year to get my money in order. Um, you know, first person to go to college in the family, uh, become a physician, six figure income. And I, it became the first National Bank of Sharon in my family. And initially I was excited to be able to do for my family and take care of my family. And then I think it just went beyond. It took me a little bit of time to learn how to say no. But I, I happened to be reading AARP which I have been receiving. And I kept saying, they're not talking to me. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> and I happened to read the sister's newsletter and it was a little box in, in the bottom about um, money management. And it was called, I think it was clean out your purse challenge. And I said, I'm going to sign up for that. I think it was like $49. I said, I'll sign up for that. And I signed up for that. And that was your program. And it was a week long. And on the first day, um, there was work done on mindset, and which I thought was extremely important. But then you had us clean out our purse. And what that meant was to look at your spending and see where you're spending your money. And I was horrified. I mean, I, I was wasting so much money. Um, by the end of that week, I had shut down so many things that I didn't need, the cable TV. I was just short of cutting off Amazon. Um, and I said, okay, I can control myself in case I need some things um, because we were, I think we we're in the pandemic by then. And I went through that exercise and I said to myself, you know, this, this lady is teaching some really important things and I want to learn about money. Um, mind you, I was doing an MBA. You do not learn about money during the MBA. But uh, I, I said, I had a budget and I said, if her number comes in uh, at my budget, I will join her program. And it did. And so I did. Um, I love that. I love yeah. that. Because, you know, Sharon, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about was here you are this accomplished 
uh, woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really want the audience to understand that some you think it's you you did everything right. I mean, you've achieved one of the highest uh, degrees level of education that anyone can aspire to. And I really wanted to begin really talking about your mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, what are the things that you learned? You alluded to that exercise that you went through and just cleaning out your purse. And so where I really want to start uh, is talking just about you specifically, first, the mindset shifts and the beliefs that you had to, that you held on to, that actually put you in a situation where in spite of the, you know, your high earning, you still had a negative word. So I really want to start there with mindset. So just for our audience, share with them a little bit about uh, like your, your beliefs around money. If you were to think of why you were uh, spending so much, mm -hmm. where do you think that that belief came from uh, uh, just in terms of you cleaning out your purse and, and finding that you have been sort of overspending? Yeah, I think, you know, when you grow up in poverty, a lot of times it, it never leaves you, first of all, it never leaves you. And I think what we learn as a society is people wear their wealth, right? And so you drive the fancy car, which I give myself credit, I've never done, but you drive the fancy car, you live in the big house, um, you dress a certain way. And so I was actually a bit caught up in that, but not in a an elitist way, not, it was just a lack of mindfulness, honestly. Um, and and then also that, just that inner, inner you know, seed of poverty um, and, and kind of displaying that I'm not, you know, I'm not poor anymore, so to speak. Um, and, and so one of the little things like my mom, and she was fabulous, she was a, the best mom ever. And and the only thing she could afford to buy herself, you know, after taking care of the three of us was eyeshadow. So I never wore eyeshadow because I equated it with poverty. And I just started wearing eyeshadow like two years ago, you know, in makeup. So little things that, you know, stuck with me for a long time. But then I realized I didn't like this feeling of always, you know, trying to pull the ends together. And I used to have a conversation with one of my cousins and it was like, I made everything this month. And I was like, this is not normal. It's like, you know, it's like this, this, you know, quest or contest every month to make sure you can cover everything. I was like, I make too much money to be living like this. This is not normal. Um, and so I took some steps prior to joining your program and trying to self-correct with that. Um, I did a shopping, a shopaholics anonymous kind of program, which is, it was very enlightening and teaching me how I related to money. And so that's how I was able to recognize that. I've also read this book. Um, it's a spiritual book about your money personality. And, and so Moses apparently had the best money personality. Um, and I found that I love, I, I love art. Um, and so I will spend for something that speaks to me that way with art. And so now when I see something, I can identify that within myself and say, do you really need that? No, you don't. Um, but it's beautiful. Admire it and keep going. Wow. So I think this No, I, I, I absolutely love because what you're just describing what is that middle class mindset. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like you in spite of everything that you have you you earned, and I thought it was interesting you were and it had an MBA and yet you said you didn't learn anything about money. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have a medical degree, you have an MBA. Uh, and so that's why mindset is so, so important is, is because no matter how much money you earn, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to turn that in, income into wealth. And so, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when we come back, I want to delve a little deeper into this middle class mindset, this pursuit of income that you had, mm -hmm. and yet you were finding that it wasn't necessarily leading you to financial success. So when we, we come back, we're going to go right back in a little bit more in depth into this whole framework of mindset strategy and execution 
But first, let's delve a little more into mindset. Let's be honest, as successful women, we're crushing it. Maxed out 401k and Roth IRA? Check. Aggressive savings and investments? Check. Yet, the freedom our success was supposed to buy can leave us stuck on the six-figure hamster wheel, watching retirement slip further down the road. There's another way. Get coaching courses and community at WealthyU.com. Make sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? So welcome back, everyone. Uh, my conversation is with Dr. Sharon Deans, and we're talking about the framework of mindset, strategy, and execution. And uh, Dr. Dean, it, Sharon, I, I really want to ask you, so as you have learned how important the mindset uh, had to this, this poverty mindset that in, in spite of everything that the high income that you were earning, that you still uh, didn't have like a foundation on how to get ahead. So you went from $1,500 in net worth in just a year to multiple six, six figures. So talk to us a little bit about what, what other mindset shifts did you have to make in order to achieve that, the, that, the, that kind of success? Is it was quite a few things. I think it, it was like something clicked for me um, during that week. And as we continued to work together and I learned more and more about investing, I was already invested, but you know, you put the money in the 401k and you let somebody else look, take care of it. We learned about investing, um, you know, how to evaluate stocks and so on and so forth. But I, I, I began to look at money as the real tool that it is. Right. And I also disconnected it from my identity that I didn't need to wear, you know, I didn't need to wear my wealth or I needn't wear my income because I consider myself still working wealthy, but I didn't need to wear my income. And so with that shift, I was able to, I mean, I purged my house um, and got rid of a, a lot of stuff and kind of went not quite minimalist, but just got rid of a lot of unnecessary baggage. And I think the other critical thing was I was at a transition at work. Um, and based on the conversations that we had, um, I, instead of just resigning, I demanded a severance because I was at a level where I should have been receiving a severance. And I secured that severance. And um, I was able to reorganize myself financially. And I was just so grateful for that moment that I had the education that I had gotten from the Wealthy You program, 
because it helped me to position myself a different way and be more fiscally responsible with my money because I was more aware of where I was going financially. Um, it also it also gave me the opportunity to, to talk to my children about mindful living. Um, I have a, a few of them that are pretty high earners and I don't want them to make the same mistakes that I've made. Oh, you know, it's, it's interesting because that's the other question that I had for you. And, and I want the audience to understand around uh, making this shift from this middle class mindset where you would, you know, the way you're describing it, describing it as wearing your wealth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're talking about uh, uh, the mindset that you had and how it really influenced your children. And so now I want to kind of shift to uh, the next uh, part of, uh, of your success, if you will, and turning things around, uh, moving from, you know, that negative net worth to now really managing your uh, finances more uh, uh, thoughtfully and mindfully mm -hmm. as you describe it. Um, so, so let's talk about the strategies that you had to employ in order to achieve your goals. So just in terms of, so our audience understands specifically, you got a handle on your finances, you know, going through this challenge, but what was the, the, the first thing that you really had to do after you got a handle on the fact that you were uh, spending, kind of overspending so much of your income? Yeah, so certainly I had to put, you know, a plug in that leak. Um, and then I had to determine how I was going to increase my income. So, you know, how I was going to turn more of my um, W-2 income into wealth. Uh, and there's different ways that you can do that. Of course, investing in the stock market is one way. Um, real estate is another way. Um, and I was looking, I had been looking for an additional stream of income for a few years on different types of small businesses to own um, that would produce an additional stream of income for me as well. And then I have some hobbies uh, and I share with you my jellies that eventually I am going to turn into a business. But right now it's just a hobby that I share with everyone. But last year I did sell jellies <laughs> uh, for a period of time uh, it, as Christmas gifts and things like that. So I just started looking at mul you know multiple streams of income. How could I increase my income so I can turn it into wealth? Um, yeah. You know, I'm so glad that you shared that because I think that, you know, talking about strategy, when you said you were negative $1,500 in net worth, even though you were making a lot of income, mm -hmm. uh, talk to us a little bit about how, you, how did you find out what your net worth was? So that was through the, the exercise that we did on, on net worth where you actually listed your your liabilities and your assets to help you determine um you know what your net worth was and a lot of mine was, was related to debt and so you know when i was able to secure the severance i was then able to reorganize or really pay off all my debt and that was the first time in my life i had ever been debt free and i tell you i walked differently I, you know it's a nice feeling to know you know you don't have any bills all your needs are met and then you have money to be able to invest in yourself and build wealth. Um, so that was a pivotal moment for me. Um, and we talked about that, uh, you know, extremely pivotal moment for me. Um, and I recently invested in a business and I had to, you know, spend some money. And I was, I talked to you about that as well. And I was fussing you like, you'll be able to pay it off. And I will, but it feels good not to have any debt at all. And so that's my goal to get back to that. And luckily it's nothing like what I had in the past, but that was pivotal to me being able to start turning my net worth around. So I recognize how much debt uh, it can impact your net worth actually. Well, I, I think what, what's interesting for the audience to understand was your strategy, you know, so first, you know, making these mindset shifts right around, you know, making a lot of money, spending a, a lot of money. Uh, I think what you talked about with your, your mom and just that poverty mindset and that feeling of being able to have whatever you want. Right. Mm -hmm. And so 
now you're sharing with the audience just really the strategy was first you know figuring out what you what you had and mm -hmm. I, I i do want to ask you this question though is when you went through that exercise and saw what your net worth was how did that make you feel i was disappointed i was embarrassed um but i didn't mind sharing with the group that we were that we were working with in the cohort that we were in because i felt like if that helps someone else um first of all i think many of us as black women are in that boat you know we're the strongholds of our family we oftentimes are financial support to our family and we overextend ourselves we just literally overextend ourselves and then you fall into that cycle of okay i need to make more money so let me get another degree and and it just falls into this cycle um, and then I had this this dream that all my kids would go to Ivy League schools. They they got accepted into Ivy League schools, but they, they also got accepted into public Ivies, and that's where they wanted to go except one. And I let her go to Princeton at an expense. And you know, in retrospect, I, I wish I'm glad she's happy. I'm happy she lived her dream. Um, but it was an expensive dream to live and, and you can dream different ways, but you said something a couple of minutes ago about being able to get whatever you want. And the curious thing about that is when you have the capacity to be able to get whatever you want, you actually don't want anything else. Uh, like, knowing yeah. that I can do, yeah. Knowing that I can get whatever I want, I have no desires. You know, and people living in big houses, I did that already. So I'm happy in a nice little tidy townhouse that I can lock the key and go when I'm ready to go and the grass is cut. So it's amazing how your mind works because once you, like, again, you have the capacity to get it, you don't even want it because well, you, you know, have, if you wanted it, you could. I love how you put that. I, I think of this quote that I heard that said, needing uh, needing nothing attracts everything. So it's it's almost like you don't need it even though you're seeing it. And so, no, 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 I'm so glad that you shared. So when we come back, I want to be able to de delve a little bit deeper into the, 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 the strat, more of the strategy and then mindset strategy and execution. So uh, I'm so excited to have you. And, and I want our audience to know that when you can make these kinds of shifts, that's really how you get wealthy. So we'll be right back. Let's be honest, as successful women, we're crushing it. Maxed out 401k and Roth IRA, check. Aggressive savings and investments, check. Yet. The freedom our success was supposed to buy can leave us stuck on the six-figure hamster wheel, watching retirement slip further down the road. There's another way. Get coaching courses and community at WealthyU.com. Sure, our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. I love y'all. All momentum we have now 
We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Welcome back, everyone. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and we're having a fascinating conversation with Dr. Sharon Deans just about her shift from income to wealth. And, and in spite of the fact that she was earning a lot of money, realized she was a negative $1,500, it had a negative $1,500 in net worth, and within just two years has really, less than two years, is now multiple uh, hundreds of thousand dollars in positive network. And so now I want to delve a little bit more into the strategies that, that she used so that you too can learn what you need to do to turn your income into wealth. So uh, welcome back, uh, uh, Dr. Deansy. The other thing I wanted to get into, so, you know, so you had this strategy. So one of the things you talked about was that you negotiated severance pay, went to another job. Do you feel like, um, the that it, in terms of strategy what were some of the other things you you started to to employ uh that that allowed you to turn that negative net worth into a positive net worth so you you got rid of the debt what 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 are other things impact were impacted so you know the timing of of my severance and starting a new job allowed me to quote unquote double dip so I started a new job immediately after I separated from my last job um, and I had to relocate for that job. Now, this is the second time in four years I've had to relocate or I, I elected or uh, elected to relocate for a job. And the last time I did, I kept my house and I flew back and forth. The company did pay for the back and forth for seven and a half months. Um, and you know came home to my house i had a car in one city and a car back in the city that i lived in um and this time you know we had had a discussion and we talked about well there's three things you can do you can sell it you can rent it or you can keep it like you did the last time and you said so what you gonna do <laughs> so i i went away in a week a couple of weeks later we talked again and i said you know what i'm gonna empty my house and put my stuff in storage and rent my house. So that was the first major move for me. Again, detaching from the material things and using what you have as a tool. So I I put the house uh, up for rent and it's renting, has been renting the entire time that I've been here almost two years. Um, and so, you know, that mortgage is paid. I don't have to pay that money out of my pocket like I did the last time. And, you know, this, and the other thing about that is, you know, you make a lot of money, so I can afford to pay for both. But why? If you don't, if you don't need to, you know, I wasn't going to be flying back and forth. It was the pandemic. Um, the other thing is I was still looking for that small business. And well, let me double back. So the other, the second swim lane is my W-2. Um, I, you know, I make a certain amount of money and my goal is to replace that income. Um, with either real estate income and, and or income from additional streams of income. Um, I don't plan to retire, but I also don't plan to work in corporate America for the rest of my life. Uh, so with the W-2, my goal was to get to a level where I, could, I didn't have a um, geographic lockdown. And I was able to achieve that this year. So I got to a regional role and I can live anywhere I want. So I'm headed back to my tribe in the Southeast <laughs> so I can spend a lot more time with my kids and my grandkids. And so, you know, that's part of that kind of financial freedom. In this instance, it was a, a role freedom, um, but it, you know, keeps me at a pretty decent um, income as far as a W-2. And then I was looking for that second stream or additional stream of income. And I had applied to the Amazon DSP delivery service partner, which is their last mile delivery logistics program uh, in 2018. And I didn't get it. But once I reorganized my finances, I applied again and I did get it. And so that I launched that business about two months ago. I'm actually in the middle of peak 
uh, for Christmas. And I, I'm actually going to train this weekend to drive. And I'm hoping I don't have to drive. <laughs> I don't want to have to drive on Christmas Eve. But if I have to, I will. But I'm going to go ahead. I hadn't had time to do the training. But I took some days off so I could do the training. And I'm, I'm going to train over the weekend. I'm going to go to class, launch my drivers, and come back to the class on Saturday and Sunday. Um, this is, and so this that's is my so, other, this is, other stream of income. And real estate was another one. I took a real, I'm, I'm a lifelong learner. And so I did a real estate course this year and not, not to sell real estate. I did a course on multifamily investing. Um, and I started underwriting projects. Um, and I actually under, I was underwriting on a regular basis in multifamily and actually got to um, like the last pick and didn't realize what it was. They sent me an email and they were like, you, you know, you're the last, you're one of the best, uh, I guess, uh, you know, proposals. But I didn't realize what it was. And uh, but I was I was holding out my number. I wasn't going to raise my number anyway because it didn't make sense in the business plan uh, to go any higher in that number. But I have invested in real estate this year. Um, I'm invested in um, 300 doors, actually. One is in, um, in a limited partnership and in a syndication, and the other one is in a joint venture. So I've been able to realize my real estate dreams right now. I don't have time to underwrite, but as soon as I get through peak that's my first order of business to go oh back. i love it so uh, you know what i love is talk about strategy 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 mm -hmm. so i hope everyone our audience is listening how mm -hmm. you the the mindset strategy execution right so the first was mindset and that's mm -hmm. really changing how you were um you, you thought about money changing mm -hmm. how you uh the decisions financial decisions you made and so when we uh, when we come back, I know that we've talked a lot about your strategy, but when we come back, I want the audience to really hear the, the power of the execution and you execution on, executing on all these strategies. So don't get, go anywhere. We're going to talk more about our mindset strategy and execution with our guest today, Dr. Sharon Deans. Let's be honest, as successful women, we're crushing it. Maxed out 401k and Roth IRA? Check. Aggressive savings and investments? Check. Yet, the freedom our success was supposed to buy can leave us stuck on the six-figure hamster wheel, watching retirement slip further down the road. There's another way. Get coaching courses and community at WealthyU.com. Alexa, play our favorite song again. Okay. I only have eyes for you. Oh, Black Star Network is this. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. <laughs> All the momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Welcome back, everyone. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, and it's time to get wealthy. We have been having a wonderful conversation with Dr. Sharon Deans around how she changed her uh, financial situation and went from a negative $1,500 in net worth to multiple six figures, moving up to seven figures. And so I'm so, so excited about this conversation. So we've talked about mindset and how she changed her mindset. We've talked about some of the strategies she 
uh, employed just around uh, making more money, making a job change, moving to opportunity, and then leveraging that to pay off all her debt. We've heard a little bit about some of the strategies she's employed, but it's one thing to have a strategy, it's another thing to execute. And so Dr. Dings, what I wanna to talk to you about, I want the audience to learn a little bit about strategy, the strategies that you've employed in order to uh, uh, really uh, uh, accelerate your financial growth. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you talked about executing on the job search, right? And finding this new opportunity and, and, and leveraging your compensation from that. And then you talked about, um, uh, moving on and in, investing in these other areas. And so my question to you is, you're kind of venturing into unknown territory. Now you have this um, certainly desire to be a small business owner, and you've talked a lot about W-2 income versus other income. I'd love if you could just share with the audience why that's important to you. Like you bought into that American dream. You, certainly you, you're living the American dream. Uh, you're a physician and now a, a, a medical executive. Uh, what would you say to them about how this different shift from this income mindset where you've earned a lot of money to now this wealth mindset and this, how, how that plays in with, with the strategies that you're actually executing? Yeah, for me, it's all about legacy. Um, I have four, four children, five grandchildren so far. Um, and, you know, I want to teach them how to build wealth, um, how to accumulate wealth. And they all have been taught to give back. So, you know, we all give back on a regular basis. So that's part of their fabric. But to be able to build wealth, it just gives you the freedom to live the way that you want to do and, and the way that you want to live. And so now when I turn to the East Coast, I can go stay, you know, at my son's house with my granddaughters for three or four months at a time and work from there if I want to, and then go back, you know, to my home wherever I'm living. Um, so that freedom to be able to do those kinds of things. But I think it's the legacy wealth building, getting them comfortable with money. Um, I have two that are minimalists already. Um, and then I have two that have, you know, who, who have modeled after my former mindset that I'm trying to get off the ledge with that. But they, but to the to want the oldest one, she saves on a regular basis, and she asked me a couple of weeks ago, "How much do you think I should have saved by now?" And we talked about that, and she's actually saved quite a bit. Um, and she lives in an apartment in Philly, and I was like, "Who owns the lot next door?" Because we can pave that and turn it to a parking lot, and and uh, you know, charge the other tenants in the building to park on a monthly basis. So we're still trying to find out who owns that lot, <laughs> so that we can pave it and fence it. <laughs> Do you feel like, do you feel like, like the, 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 the shift that you've made mm -hmm. from, from in, in, income to wealth, the shift that you've made in your mindset and in, in the kind of, like, this is another strategy. Do mm -hmm. you feel like you would have been able to have that, uh, even think of that strategy in the, if you would have even thought of thinking about that strategy in the past, just around you know what you're teaching your your children and then you i even identifying this parking uh, a lot as something that would be an investment yeah no i think it, the education is key you have to educate yourself and you have to you know you have to go open and ready to move and you have to be agile you have to be willing to change your mindset and you know take off all the yeah i call it golden handcuffs um, you know, a lot of times we, we, we box ourselves into debt and, and, you know, attaching ourselves to a certain appearance and so on and so forth. Um, you know, like I haven't had jewelry on except for earrings and a necklace in two years. And, I, you know, I put it on, it goes somewhere and it felt odd. I took it back off and it's like, does it really matter? Um, you know, it, my clothes are almost like a uniform. I wear the same, you know, it's, it's different pants and shirt, but it's like, the, it's like a uniform every day. Um, and you think about Obama, you know, he only had blue suits and I think one other color suit and he wore the same thing all the time. It just it, it clears your mind to do other things and to and to think about um, being able to do other things. The other thing, though, is that's important to me as far as establishing these these different businesses 
and making investments in real estate is does it help someone else? So I, I invest in work ho- workforce housing um, for folks that are working and giving them a, you know a decent place to live. Um, you know this this Amazon venture um, is employing forty six people. Um, 46 families, uh, you know, have an income. And so it, it's just not about, you know, making money. I, the money comes and it gives me an opportunity to turn it into wealth. So to invest into real estate, you know, transportation logistics is a whole nother world. And I'm trying to figure out how can I learn more about it? And I have to, you know, temper myself right now because I'm, I just, I've only in this for two months. But I recognize that this is last mile. Then you have radius, which is up to 350 to 500 miles. And then you have, you know, freight that goes across the country. And, you know, and I'm, I'm having dinner with someone in January to understand how that works and how I could pop. I'm a, I'm a buy the book person. So I need that, you know, I need to be able to read the, the theory behind it and the literature behind it to understand it. But I do want to understand that and diversify. And diversification is something that I've learned from you, right? So looking at your stock portfolio and making sure that you're well diversified. And then again, looking at the kind of businesses that I want, you know, want to engage in. One, is it helping someone else? And two, you know, it in that business, is there a chance to diversify? And so there definitely is in transportation logistics a chance to diversify. In healthcare, um, I mean, I love what I do every day. Actually, um, you know, we're talking about social determinants of health and population health and things like that. So, I'm the last 15 months I've been living the dream as far as work um, outside of being an obstetrician at the bedside, which was the best part of my life. Um, but now to be able to do population health work, you know, for um, the folks in our society that need that kind of support, extremely important. So I try to live my values on a daily basis. Um, financial literacy is something else. I mean, I just bought a, a financial literacy investment game for my granddaughters for Christmas uh, to start teaching them how to respect money and how to utilize money as a tool. Um, you know, constantly going over that with my my daughters um, and getting them on board. Um, but yeah, it, it's just it's just been an amazing ride, and, and you know, I started all this work with with you, Deborah, and it just kept building, kept building. I mean, going to the seminars and hearing, um, you know, different presenters bring different things to the table and how to approach and. Um, but I think you have to have your mind made up on where you're going. Otherwise, you jump at every shiny object. So I was real clear that, you know, it was going to be real estate and it was going to be a small business. And I just had to identify that small business. And then I got my coaching credentials. Uh, I've been doing that, you know, for free for a really long time. <laughs> and so I have my uh, credentials to do executive and um, and leadership coaching. And I'm launching that business in, in Q1 of 2022. So, um, and, and I think I, then I should be okay for a minute. And <laughs> Because all of this stuff just came together at once. I launched, I got promoted, launched uh, Amazon, and finished my coaching uh, training all in the same weekend. <laughs> well, I tell you, you so, talk I need about a minute. mindset, strategy, right? And you, mm-hmm. you know, you really were when we met. You were just, you, you know, such a sponge around wanting to. I think you told me in 2020 that you said this was my money year. Mm-hmm. And do you realize it's not, it's just 2021. It's not quite, we met in, I want to say. It's May. Um, May. May right? of 2020. So it's, yeah. it's, it's uh, I think it's, it's probably our audience is thinking, my goodness, she was able to accomplish all of this, you know, just talking about execution. And so, you know, we talked about mindset and that really was you, you know, making that shift to understanding that, you know, you, you were following that middle-class dream you know, and yet you weren't achieving financial Mm -hmm. success, right? And Mm -hmm. so when you made that shift from income into wealth, really looking at, you know, your income and and knowing that you had a lot, uh, and then now your, your, the strategies that you've employed and you, you, you know, you went through a litany of things that you've executed on. You, uh, you, you certainly paid off all your debt, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, we didn't delve into it a lot, but I know you've increased your investment significantly, mm -hmm. even in your, your investment portfolio. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes, I have. Yeah. And so what kind of, just share with our audience for just a minute, I'd love for you to share what kind of strategies you've actually employed, uh, just understanding your own investments in your portfolio. Yeah, so I, I double checked behind my financial um, consultant and he was stunned. I came and I was like, I don't think I like this investment. It's not performing well. You know, I want you to move this. Um, I mean, I, you know, I send a certain amount every month and he invested, but I, I sat down with him and I was like, no, I, this is what I want to do. Um, you know, I moved some money around for real estate investment. Um, I have a self-directed IRA, which is, well, I have a self-directed 401k, um, which is another tool that you can use, um, for investment. Um, I have the stash account and I have all my kids have stash accounts. And I just looked at the custodial uh, accounts for my granddaughters, my two older granddaughters. Um, and so I, you know, I, I, um, I just started paying attention. I watch Yahoo Finance all the time. And like the whole, this whole thing around um, the internet of things and um, the, all of the electric cars and electric, um, you know, vehicles. And, and they now have electric trucks and they also have all of the systems that monitor the truck drivers. So you could, and I'm gonna be getting those in my trucks in January but it monitors everything they do inside the truck. And I saw that in China two years ago. And it's here, it was probably here in the United States. I just wasn't aware, but it's here in the United States. So one of the companies, Samsara, just had their IPO uh, on the 15th. And I, I was, I've been running. So I've signed up to this IPO notification. So some of these companies that I follow, you know, especially the ones that are not public yet, if something happens with them, I can jump in. I did a little bit with uh, Ravinian, which makes the um, electric vehicles and they actually uh, supply all the electric vehicles for Amazon. And so it was funny because when I went to orientation on Amazon or at the distribution center, um, they were putting in the, um, the electricity. And so I said to the guy, I said, well, who makes the trucks? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what I love? Here's what I love. What I love, Karen, and I love our audience is getting is that here you were sort of a novice just 18 months ago. And now it's like everywhere you go, you see an investment. And, and uh, yeah. so I just, when we come back, I want to, I, I would be remiss if I didn't allow uh, Dr. Sharon Dees to just talk about what has been the most impactful around this shift. So don't go anywhere, folks. When we, we come back, we're going to uh, just delve finally into how she's been impacted in all of this. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we've been talking how to get wealthy uh, with Dr. Sharon Deans, and you've certainly heard a lot about her journey, her financial journey to making that shift from an income mindset to a wealth mindset. Uh, let's welcome her back. And Dr. Deans, I just really wanted you to just share out of everything that you've learned in these past, I mean, literally 18 months for you to be able to make these kinds of moves and make this shift from income 
to wealth. What would you, what, what, what has been the most impactful uh, lesson that you've learned that you want to share with our audience? So I think um, it, it's hard to put in words. It's almost like money doesn't define you. But then you say, well, if you say that, why are you on this quest, you know, to build wealth? And I think what I mean by that is I don't need to wear it. So now if I go out and I look like a total bum, it's like, so what? I know I know who I am. I know what I have. I think it's shifted my confidence um, uh, in, in managing money and knowing that I can manage money very, very well. Um, you know, when I get ready to locate, relocate to the Southeast, I have no worries that I'll be able to, you know, secure a home. Um, so it gives you, it, it allows you this confidence when you have, you, you can command the tool of money. I mean, cause it's a tool in our, in our society that you have to command well in, in order to be able to navigate. And so to be able to do that, it's, it's just given me a certain confidence. You know, I was dozing off on the couch last night and something came, I can't even remember what it was on Yahoo Finance. And I kind of set up a, for a minute in the fog trying to see what they were saying about. And it was another Internet of Things. But, you know, looking at the I was just looking at my account this morning, my stash account, making sure everything was balanced and seeing what the performance was like. Um, you know, that have stuff in different places. You know, of course, your financial advisors always want you to put all your money with them. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, so, you know, that that confidence that I can control my own money, that I can question what's going on and make sure I have oversight of my money and where it's going. Um, you know, in the joint venture that I have in real estate, uh, I'm on the um, the asset management team. So I'm looking at the business plan and then is the business plan being executed the way we set out to do it? If not, how do we have to pivot to make sure that we we, we reach our goal? So I, just the confidence, I mean, if I didn't understand money, I would not be sitting at that table. I, I probably would be doing the, you know, something a little bit less um you know, number intensive, but because I do. You know, you know what I find money. really intriguing about your story more than anything is you've had all this education. And I think we all don't, don't you feel it odd that you had a medical degree, you have multiple uh, graduate with degrees and an MBA, and yet you hadn't covered this mm -hmm. in your formal education. Don't you mm -hmm. find that intriguing? It is intriguing, um, you know, and I remember when I was in elementary school, they used to have home economics or in middle school, maybe, and they took all that stuff out of school. And, it, and it's just even the basic how to make a budget and that much I knew because I did have that education in school. Um, and, you know, I think when I was in, in medical school and college, I had no choice but to manage my money well in order to survive. And I think then when I, you know, I my income multiplied um, is when I, I didn't practice the mindfulness that I should have practiced at that time and got caught up in, you know, the whole thing of living kind of large and not really paying attention or, or seeking that additional um, education around money. So I think, you know, to be mindful is extremely, extremely important. Like I tell my kids, I used to give them this really big Christmas and I'm like, it's not necessary. I mean, by the time they got to teenagers, I had, you know, cut it back significantly and, you know, they were upset. And I'm like, you guys don't need all that stuff. You know, I had gone to a, a mission a trip in Nigeria in 2008, I think it was. And when I came back, I was done with the whole big lifestyle. I'm like, I don't need this. Like there's a different way to live. Um, and, and make use of your money a different way. So it, it you know, it's, it's been a journey. It's a journey. Um, and, and I'm sure there's still more for me to learn and see and do. Um, but I'm just so grateful that I, you know, I had the, the presence of mind to, to focus on money. And, you know, you've heard me say this, you know, and I'm, a, a, you know, a, a believer, a God-fearing person. And like I told you the other week, God is just reigning all over me, R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G, -I -I -G, yeah. all these blessings. Um, and then, you know, for us as African-Americans, we learned that, you know, money is the root of all evil, right? And so how do you reconcile that? 
Um, and it's, it's the love of money. So I'm not going to do anything to get money. You know, I'm going to do something that's meaningful, you know, to, to others, um, meaningful to myself and, and gives me an opportunity to turn that income into additional wealth. Um, and I, and we talked about that a lot in the sessions, even in the cohort groups about that whole adage of, you know, money is the root of all evil and how as black women, we have to reconcile that in our minds that it's okay to have a lot of money <laughs> as a black <laughs> woman, know, it I, is definitely okay. okay. And you know what, I, what I love about your story and, and uh, Dr. Deans, and I, I just got, I'm so grateful that you were able to spend some some time with us and 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 sort of launch get wealthy, if you will. The most important thing that I come away from this conversation thinking about you really is that you now can give from a full cup and not a half empty. Yes, one. absolutely. Oh, Dr. Deans, thank you so much for joining us today. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the uh, another just kind of review what you heard today. Analyze, optimize, maximize. We'll be right back. Let's be honest. As successful women, we're crushing it. Maxed out 401k and Roth IRA? Check. Aggressive savings and investments? Check. Yet, the freedom our success was supposed to buy can leave us stuck on the six-figure hamster wheel, watching retirement slip further down the road. There's another way. Get coaching courses and community at WealthyU.com. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real um, revolutionary right now. Like, Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach. Analyze, optimize, maximize. If you listen to this whole conversation, what you need to know that the reason that Dr. Deans was able to have that kind of impact and that kind of result is because of how she applied her mindset strategy and execution. So first, she really analyzed where her cash flow was going. She was making a lot of money, but most of it was going uh, out and, and she it ended up with a negative net worth. So the next thing that she really had to do was to optimize her situation. So she was earning a lot of money. She figured she could uh, negotiate uh, to another position. And that severance pay from one employer to that new employer and bonuses allowed her to pay off all of her debt. I often say we all have an investment opportunities. We just got to really look at how we can optimize and then maximize. Finally, really taking a look at her investments optimizing it, having a conversation with her uh, advisor, sharing with him that she was evaluating what he was doing, and then finally looking at other ways that she could move from just earning an income to making investments that would create an income. Analyze, optimize, maximize. I hope you learned a lot from Dr. Dean's story and that you will begin to apply these concepts as well. Here are the three things that you should know from today's show. The first is student loan debt isn't necessarily good debt. As Dr. Dean shared, it had her in at a negative $1,500 in net worth. And one of the first things she did was pay off that student loan debt. Secondly, that you can your income has to be turned into assets or wealth. 
uh, even though Dr. Deans was earning a lot of income, she had little wealth to show for it, but she certainly turned that around by uh, paying off debt, increasing the amount of money that she was investing and investing in other areas. And then finally, what you should know is it's not just a 401k or retirement plan with your employer that's going to lead you to wealth. You need to diversify and explore other investment opportunities. So I hope you enjoy today's show, but don't go anywhere because next week we're going to be talking about how the American dream can become a nightmare if you're not careful. So I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach. Thanks for coming on, uh, joining us on Get Wealthy. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and I can't wait to see you next week.